Hey everyone, I'm Ezra, second generation at Summerhill. I'm here with Michael Alexander. Hi. It's the winemaker here and uh, this is the first of four new release videos we're doing through the month of March. Uh, we're going to start off with um, two wines that are, we're going to be releasing some 2020 vintage wines later in the month, uh, but first we're going to be releasing some wines that were grown in years past but are just being released now. And we're starting with, what are we starting with? We are starting with our 2018 Summerhill Vineyard Gruner Ventliner. Yeah. So we've offered this wine previously in vertical packs with other Gruners, but now it's just being commercially released for the first time. Uh, 2018 vintage. What, what, what do you have to tell us? Uh, it was a nice year, beautiful year. Um, but a nice growing season right into October. Um, so we let this fruit hang for, for a long time and really develop that ripeness, concentrate those flavors. Um, so it was a great, great year for growing Gruner. And I remember this when it was first bottled and it has developed a little since then. It was bottled young. It was, yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's definitely done well with some bottle age. Yeah. Uh, we found that it was a little bit young, a little bit tight when we first bottled it. Um, so just letting it rest and our cellar has really done it, done it wonders. Yeah, so what do you, what do you smell when you put your nose in there, Michael? I mean, so I definitely get that that celery root, a little bit of white pepper, um, which is classic for, for Gruner. But there's some ripeness too, like there's some real fruit in this vintage. Absolutely. There's a nice pear note, um, almost uh, an apple note, mm -hmm. some of those stone fruits. Mm -hmm. It's got a, a nice uh, earthiness, minerality to it um, on the nose. Yeah. So. Compared to the 2017, this has a little more intensity. A little more sort of uh, a backbone. There's like the the freshness in the in the 17, the acidity all went malolactic. Is this it's, also malolactic? Uh, I was partial malolactic, but it's still got a lot of that into, um, malic acid, so it's a little bit fresher, a little bit brighter. Yeah. Um, you know that acid really pops out more on the palate. So wine 101 for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, acidity, malic acid is like what you would find in a green apple. That that impression of acidity. Uh, lactic acid is like the acid that you find in milk or dairy products, which is a much softer impression. So like the, the pH and the, the level of acidity doesn't change, but the, the impression, the way the acidity expresses itself does. Absolutely. It becomes a rounder, softer acid. Yeah. We got a tractor in the background. I hope you can hear what Michael said. He said we've got a rounder, softer acid, but this still has some of that real fresh, bright, apple-y acidity as well, which is really nice. Yeah, it's quite nice. It's got that that brightness and the freshness from the alec, the malic, um, but mm. it's also got a, a richness that comes from the lactic acid. So it's yeah. got a, a nice combination of both. It really gives it a nice balance, a nice weight, and a nice mouthfeel. Yeah, I think rich is a good uh, good word to describe this wine and. Um, what would you say, like, uh, you know, technically, how much residual sugar, so that's the sugar that's unfermented that the yeast didn't eat, like how, how much RS is in this? It's, uh, it's dry. Dry. Um, yeah, it uh, fermented all the way through. All the way through. So this is a bone dry wine, although it's not really, it's not like searing or unpleasant, like there is a lot of fruit, and a lot of character and a lot of richness. So. Yeah, and that partial mallow really helped with that. Um, it kind of gave it the, the impression of a little bit more residual sugar than is actually in here. Mm. I love the expression, no wine before it's time. Some wines are great when they're young, you know, like we're going to be releasing the 2020 Rosés in a couple of weeks, but this is now, how old, my math is so bad. Uh, just over two years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> And um, I'd say this is, has never been better. This is now in its prime, ready to drink. Would you sell it for longer? I wouldn't. Um, the bar or the barrels, the bottles that are in my uh, cellar. I've started to open them. I'm really enjoying how it's drinking now. Yeah, me too. Um, it's got that richness. It's got that fruit. It's got complexity. So, I think now is a great time to, to pull some corks and enjoy. Pull it. some corks. So I think there is a total. How many cases of this? About 100, 150 cases. In that range, yeah. And I'm not sure exactly, but in, in about that much, it's not a small. It's not a large amount. Uh, but we sell most of this directly through our. Uh, so this should hopefully last us about the year, through the year, we'll be drinking the Gruner Veltliner, and um, it's fantastic. I love this wine. This is growing right here at Summerhill Vineyard, made to Demeter Biodynamic Standards. It's a very pure, authentic, real wine. It's a unique wine, and um, I think you'll find a lot of pleasure in it. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Should we move on? What's the second new release of the week, Michael? So the second release is our 2017 Heritage Series Marichal Foch. 
Um, so this was all grown down at the Park Hill Vineyard in Oliver. Uh, beautiful site up on the top of the hill, rests up there. Um, it's one of the most beautiful spots in the entire valley. I love visiting. Now, a lot of people are like, why do you guys grow Marichal Foch? Park Hill, it's almost, it almost has its own little valley. It's kind of up and over the hill from the Okanagan, the main Okanagan Valley. And uh, the Buchler family has the Foch growing basically around the valley bottom, so it, which is like a frost pocket. It's where frost would settle. And Foch is a frost tolerant variety. So you got lots of heat, it's, the, it's all over, but it's in the winter and around the growing, uh, you know, in the edges of the growing season, spring and fall, um, it's in danger of having frost in that spot. So that's why they grow Foch and they've grown it there for a long time. Yeah, it's a really nice spot for it because it is winter hardy. We don't worry a lot about spring and fall frosts. Um, but because it's such a warm site in, in Oliver, we're able to get some of these beautiful ripe flavors. Mm -hmm. We never worry about the Foch getting ripe. We know that it's a great spot for it. The last 20, 30 years have proved to us that it does really well there, so. Mm -hmm. So this is a, from the 2017 vintage. Um, any notes on the vintage? Uh, warm, it got a little bit wet towards the end, but fortunately we managed to get this off the vine before the, uh, the rains really came. Um, so it still has that concentration. Um, we let it uh, hang on the vine, let it dry out a little bit, um, and uh, concentrate those flavors before we picked. And we, we were lucky enough that we got it right at a window where there was no rain. That's nice. And um, this had some time aging in barrel, huh? It did, yeah. It spent a couple of years in barrel. Um, yeah. So aging. this is, the Gruner has been bottle developing for a couple of years, but this one has been in the bottle for not that long. Huh? No, it's been in the bottle for a few months now. Um, okay, so it's good. over bottle shock. It's been to its time up in the pyramid. Um, but it, uh, it really did well with some time in barrel to help round out the acid, yeah. soften some of the flavors. Mm -hmm. I actually, there, I mean, the, the sort of wood note, the note of the wood is apparent to me on the palate and, and on the nose, but it doesn't sort of dominate it. Like the Foch is such a distinctive flavor and there's so much, so much character from the Foch. I think the wood is kind of nice to balance it and to sort of add a little like warmth and, uh, almost like, uh, it's weird because normally the, Normally, I'd think of uh, wood as being like bottom notes and like rich notes, but the Foch is such a rich grape that it's almost like, you know, mid palate notes and a little bit of like adding texture to it rather than, than pro providing a foundation for it. Absolutely. It just kind of gives it another layer underneath to really allow everything else to pop. Mm -hmm. that's, quite, that's quite nice. I think, I think you guys are going to like uh, that balance of fruit and wood in there. And there's... Compared to the last vintage of Foch, how would you say this one is different? Um, I would say this one's a little bit more fruit forward. Uh, mm -hmm. The acid's a little bit softer on it. The mm -hmm. tannin structure's a little bit softer. Yeah. Um, you know, this is one that uh, that will do really well right from bottle. Yeah. Um, it'll pair really well with food, and um, I think it's it's more of a, a classic style of Foch. Yeah. I would say it's probably um, smoother, and probably more like um, immediately appealing. The 16 had a lot of character and was a pretty big wine with some with some kind of like elbows or edges. You know what I mean? Absolutely. This yeah. one's this one's a little more like uh, easy, easy going, friendly. Yeah. He says, he's, <laughs> this one says, "Love me, love me, drink me, love me." <laughs> well, it's working. I keep going back for yeah, another sip. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we're gonna be back next week with a couple new releases. We're gonna have a 2020. Uh, and a 2019 next week. Um, but uh, these are the new releases for this week and they're available um, with like a one-click purchase and they ship complimentary to your door all across Canada uh, for this week only. And then they'll just be available normally on our e-com after that. So uh, you guys enjoy. Thanks for joining us today. Till next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>